Çok sürdüm. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yen Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kidam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Ande Ham Shiguru Shi Uta Padakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Shi Rupam Saguja Tam Sagaha Sahaganat Raganatam Vitam Tam Saji Ram Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Padijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishya Kam Vitam Shadamam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pachari Nene Rasesa Sunyavari Pasyatyare Satarine Panchakalpatarubascha Kripa Sindhu Prabhacha Titanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Maha Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhaktarindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shri Krishna. So, this is a verse from the Madhya Lila, chapter 8, verse number 4. We'll go through a, a few verses, starting with this one. Nishimha Dehiha Nishimha Dehiha Kaila Dandavat Pranati Prema Vesa Kaila Bahu Ritigita Stuti Upon seeing the deity of Lord Nishringadeva in the temple, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered his respectful obeisances by falling flat at an ecstatic love. He performed various dances, chanted, and offered prayers. Hmm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would travel and he stopped at various temples. And many of the temples were Nishringadev temples, so here's one temple that he came and offered his obeisances, offered prayers, chanted and danced in front of the deity, Lord Nishringadev. Shri Nisimha, Jai Nisimha, Jai Jai Nisimha. Paladadesha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Bringam. All glories to Nishringadev. All glories to Nishringadev, who was the Lord of Prahlad Maharaj, and like a honeybee is always engaged in beholding the lotus like face of the goddess of fortune. Purport, the goddess of fortune is always embraced by Lord Nishringadev. This is mentioned in the commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, written by the great commentator. Srila Srihad Swami. The following verse was composed by Srihad Swami in his commentary on the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 1087, verse number one. Vagesya Yasya Bada Ne Lakshmi Yasya Shyabaksha Si Yasya Tam Ridayam Sambitam Nishrimha Maham Bajay. Lord Nishringa Dev is always assisted by Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And he's always embracing the goddess of fortune to his chest. The Lord has always completed knowledge within himself. Let us offer our obeisances unto Nishrimadev. Similarly, in his commentary on the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, again, Sri Swami describes Lord Nishrimadev in this way. Sarad idu vicham vande parindra vadanam harim. Let me offer my obeisances unto Lord Nisimhadev, who has always enlightened Prahlad Maharaj within his heart and always kills the nations that attacks the devotees. His mercy is distributed like moonshine, and his face is like that of a lion. Let me offer my obeisances unto him again and again. Verse 6. 
Ugram Pian Nugra Evayam Sadbaktanam Kaysari Kaysari Vasvapotanam Anyasam Ugravikramaha. Although very ferocious, the lioness is very kind to her cubs. Some of those are very ferocious to non devotees like Arani Kashi Bu. Lord Nasimha Dev is very, very soft and kind to devotees like Prahlad Maharaj. So this, this verse was composed by Srihar Swami in his commentary on the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 791. So we see from these verses, Sridhar Swami is mentioned throughout. Sridhar Swami is considered to be the foremost commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam and his commentation is considered to be the foundation where all other knowledge of Bhagavatam derives. In other words, all other commentaries give credence first to Sridhar Swami. It's interesting, and we also know that in Krishna consciousness, a devotee, even day-to-day -day devotees like us who has a particular focus in their worship and uh, Sridhar Swami this was glorified by Lord Chaitanya that he is the foremost of all commentaries commentators on Srimad Bhagavatam and he is, his commentation must be accepted um, is his Istadev his worshipful deity is Lord Nishringadev. When Prahlad Maharaj was worshiping, uh, when Prahlad Maharaj was being threatened by his father, Kashipu, it said he remembered Krishna. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj was a devotee of Sri Krishna. And then the Lord appeared to him in that form of Nisringadev. And then he worshipped that manifestation of Krishna, who is known as Nisringadev, half man, half lion. So it's interesting. It's not that Prahlad Maharaj was meditating on Nisringadev, but it's only when Nisringadev appeared later that we connect Lord Maharaj to Lord Nishringadev, but his worshipful deity is was Lord Sri Krishna himself. And this is explained in the Bhagavatam uh, statements regarding this partic particular pastime. So in this age of Kali, this is an age of where Manda Sumanda Matiyam Manya Bhaga Padvitaha or even more uh, uh, descriptive is that Kalir Doshanidi Raja Nasti Eko Mahan Gunahan, that in this age is an ocean of faults mm -hmm. from all angles of vision. Um, the living entities are being harassed by the material energy. And uh, they're also being harassed by other living entities in the material energy known as demons or those who present themselves as leaders of society but act in a way to exploit those who they are supposed to be leading. They are also known as demons. And it's explained two classes of men are always there, the demons and the devatas. And these will be there in time and memorial as long as the material energy is there. There will always be these two classes. And uh, so in our present situation, um, it appears that the demons, and this is also mentioned in the seventh, I'm sorry, in seventh canto, yeah, uh, chapter one, verse number eight, where the demons are are very prominent nowadays due to the increase of the, the lower modes of material energy, such as the modes of passion and ignorance. And so in order to give protection to the devotees, 
the Lord appears in this wonderful form. And therefore, the devotees say, Bahir Nishing Ho Ridahe Nishing Ho, or um, that uh, wherever I go, I always remember the Lord Nishingadev because he is always there to uh, support and protect his devotees. And so devotees feel no fear in this age. Fear is a very strong element of influence. In fact, people are dying simply out of fear. Um, they, by, by becoming fearful, they cause themselves to get sick. And that sickness causes them to have physical difficulties. Mental illness is the, usually the start of physical uh, breakdown. When the devotee is free from fear, when the devotee is happy, engaged in devotional service, they're usually healthy also. Those who are fearful experience ill health. So, um, but fearlessness comes by way of shelter with the source of all. Prabhupada talks about how this material energy is conducted by Krishna. And one who sees fear, something fearful, and they should know that it is being allowed by Krishna. For instance, when Prabhupada was a young man during World War II, he was living in India, in Calcutta. This is just before, not maybe not before, but maybe about 10, more than 10 years actually, towards the end of the 1930s, the beginning of the 1940s. Uh, the war was going on between uh, Germany and uh, England. And they were fighting in the, you know, in the British quarters in Calcutta. So probably was there with his family. And his wife had just cooked kachoris and it was an evening time and he was being visited by his friend. So they were just about to have a uh, evening meal with kachoris and, and then the bombs, the sirens came off, warning everyone. And now the Germans are bombing the English quarter, take shelter. So Prabhupada's friend, he immediately encouraged Srila Prabhupada to come, let's go to the bunkers. And Prabhupada said, no, actually, I, I'm going to stay here. And uh, so his friend left. And Prabhupada describes his experience as the bombs were coming. He said, I was seeing Krishna in the form of a bomb. Here comes Krishna in the form of a bomb. So what does that really mean? Is that Krishna is the bomb? No, but a devotee tries to see the hand of God in everything. And knowing that Krishna is, he allows things to go on, or he, he wants things to go on. There's things that he makes happen and things that he allows to happen. When the modes of material energy are prominent, such as any particular mode, whether it's goodness, passion, or ignorance, certain people become prominent and certain activities also based on the type of people become prominent. When the mode of goodness come, becomes prominent, people are pious and the devatas and the devotees flourish. When the mode of passion becomes prominent, the demons and sinful, and sinful and passionate activities become prominent. When the mode of ignorance comes, then the rakshashas and the yakshas, they become prominent, the man-eaters. And uh, then though, that in that way, the modes of material nature are enhanced by the sinful nature of the general population. And Krishna allows that to go on. He doesn't because he puts the he puts the material energy in in force, and then as it forces, he he doesn't interfere with the reactions. But he's always there to uh, protect the devotees against fearful situations and at the same time encourage anyone and everyone to take 
to devotional service. So this protective force is there. Not that, that devotees think, well, Lord Nishingadev is protecting me. He is, and that's it. We should also think like that. And no, it's a fact. But we should not become, uh, what we say, carefree, careless, or lackadaisical in the face of apparently precarious situations that come by way of material energy. Uh, one always has to take caution. But the best caution along with whatever we may do on the, on, the, on the protective level is to take shelter of Krishna. Therefore, the holy name of Krishna is Krishna and sound in its full force. I was telling one story how um, one man, he was the father of one of our devotees in Mayapur in the this gentleman became quite ill and he came down with terminal cancer. And so he was hospitalized and his son, the devotee was visiting him and he was trying to get his father to chant, encouraging him on how important it is that he's, he could, he could leave the world so chant Hare Krishna. Now the father wasn't so inclined to anything spiritual. But he listened, but still nothing changed. So the next day after his son had been there, uh, the man was in the hospital. He was somewhat unattended. He was alone. And uh, he looked in the direction of the door of his room, and he saw a strange figure standing there. He couldn't make out what the figure was, but it was something he had never seen before. And then that figure started to speak to him like the figure was not personally there, but he was there in the sound of his voice. And that, that voice was like the rolling of thunder. And he said, chant that mantra you were told to chant. In other words, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so it had such an effect on the on the father that he actually began chanting. And then the next day, he departed the world. So it's that Nishringadev actually wanted to show some special mercy because being a father of a devotee means one gets much of the mercy that the devotee gets also. It says that anyone connected to a devotee also benefits by that connection. And the more, just like we have the example of Dhruva Maharaj, his mother, um, what was her name? Suchitra, uh, she was a, just a simple woman. Well, she was actually a queen, but not a very important queen amongst Uttanapada's queens. And she, her son was Dhruva. Dhruva was rebuked by his stepmother, Suruchi. And uh, he came to his mother crying, wanting some revenge. And she said, well, actually, you know, uh, great sages and saints, they go and they worship God. And he said, well, where's God? And he, she said, well, every, uh, they go to the forest to perform great austerities. Little did she know that her son was only five years old, took her seriously and left home and went to the forest and he performed austerities. Later on, of course, we understand from this pastime how he grew into a pure devotee of the Lord and he ruled the world for 36,000 years and he has a planet known as Druvaloka. On Druvaloka, there's an island called Swetadweep Druvaloka is a special planet. It's a spiritual planet within the material world. And the Lord resides there in Shirodakshai Vishnu. And, uh, and so just before leaving the world after his rule of the universe, um, he requested that his mother also receive the mercy. And then... Uh, 
as it was described in this Leela, he was leaving the world and a flower airplane came to pick him up. And then when he requested to give his mother also mercy, they said, look to your left, Dhruva, and she, he did. And there his mother was getting into a, a similar Vimana. And uh, she was also being taken back to the spiritual world. So the mother of a pure devotee, although she wasn't qualified to go back because of her connection with Dhruva Maharaj and his compassion towards his mother, she also received full mercy. So this is, this is one of many, many uh, related pastimes of how the connection with a devotee, even though one is below the standard of pure devotion, still they receive full mercy. So how important it is to become a devotee and how important it is to, that it influences others. Sometimes our family members don't appreciate our devotional activity. Little did they know is that they're actually benefiting spiritually by having a member of their family as a devotee of the Lord. They even may be inimical to, to the process of Krishna consciousness. But aside from that, because of their connection, still they get some mercy. And this is the special mercy of the Lord. And the Lord says, anyone who is dear to my devotee is also dear to me. Mm -hmm. So becoming dear to the devotee means becoming dear to the Lord also. Uh, but if one can, becomes a devotee, that is even there. Therefore, one can save their family members. Sometimes we want to do good to our family members, friends, relatives. We think in terms of how to benefit them. But as we make spiritual progress, they also receive some of the sukriti or the results of our own spiritual merits in their life. And if they're, when we say favorable, they get much. You see, we see the example of Virani Kashipu. What was his qualification? He didn't have anything. He was actually against the Lord and he fought with the Lord. And he hated the Lord, actually. <laughs> but because of his son, he also got liberation. Because his son pleaded, prayed to him, prayed to Lord Nishringadeva at the end to give his father special mercy. And he did. Just to please his devotee. These are the examples of how, important, how auspicious it is to be connected with a devotee. Sometimes we see, um, you know, family members, sometimes they even stop their family members or try to stop them from worshiping the Lord. But still, just like Harani Kashipu did, because their connection of that devotee is they get some benefit. And that's how auspicious Krishna consciousness is here. And Prahlad Maharaj is here in this beautiful prayer. It says that the Lord, he's compared to a lioness who has her cubs. And uh, the lioness, especially the female lion, is very ferocious. When she, when she's, especially when she's trying to protect her cubs. And uh, her ferocity is directed to the, anyone who wants to be harmful. But here, the, the, non -de the, devotee, the non devotees who harass the devotees, is she becomes, Lord Nishringadev becomes very um, strong against them. And many times he kills them in different ways. Prabhupada tells about how the big fight in Bombay when we were trying to uh, uh, acquire that land to build the Juhu temple in Bombay, how we were being uh, uh, cheated in so many ways to get our money at the same time not give us the land. Prabhupada, Prabhupada was very aware of the person, Mr. Nair, who was doing so many different things to uh, 
cheat the devotees, uh, take their money, promise them the land and find some, some legal clause that the devotees didn't follow and then use it to rescind the contract and at the same time keep the money. And this Mr. Nair was very good at that because he had done it with many previous uh, previous persons he worked with. But now he tried it on Prabhupada and that was his mistake because Prabhupada is, you know, a pure devotee and he's completely protected by the Lord and Prabhupada on an individual level is completely uh, intelligent. He knows how to deal with all, everything. And so Prabhupada could see through the whole thing, how we were being cheated. And Prabhupada gave us many instructions on how to deal with Mr. Nair. A lot of times we didn't follow those instructions properly. And Mr. Nair was gaining the upper hand. Finally, Prabhupada understood that this man, he has a lot of support in government. He's a big thief. He's wealthy. He has a lot of influence. It was going to be very hard to defeat him and get the land or even to get, you know, get our money back. So Prabhupada said, I prayed to Lord Nishringadev. <laughs> and then, of course, during this battle, legal battle with Mr. Nair, uh, Mr. Nair went to sleep one night and he didn't wake up the next morning. When Prabhupada heard it, he said, Yes, I prayed to Lord for Lord Nishringadev to kill him. <laughs> and so he did. <laughs> because he was such a demon. Prabhupada said about Mr. Nair, he said, everyone in this material world will go back home to Godhead except Mr. Nair. <laughs> he was such a cheater, taking people's money illegally and not giving them anything. But they made a mistake. He made a mistake trying it on problem. And then his wife, Mrs. Nair, she tried to take up the fight where her husband left off. But and Prabhupada was very kind towards her. And then she knew she couldn't battle against Prabhupada. So she came and uh, surrendered to Srila Prabhupada in a very emotional way, apologizing for all the harassment her and her husband had give, given to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada treated her like a daughter and was very kind to her and forgave her for all her mischievous activities like that. So this is how this was an example of how the Sringadev stepped in and made the difference in this particular situation. And that's the power of a pure devotee. The Lord will act on behalf of the pure devotee. And for us who are maybe not so pure, the Lord will always protect his devotee as long as we take shelter. That shelter comes in the form of prayers. It comes in the form of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, especially because by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it is considered to be the best of all prayers because it's the petition to worship the Lord in devotion by asking the Lord to please give us devotional activities. Um, and the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is a way to ask the Lord, please engage me in your devotional service. And so it's the best of all prayers. When Srila Prabhupada was explaining how his association with his spiritual master was very limited, but he said in that limited association, I never asked him any questions. I only asked him, how can I serve you? And they, Prabhupada was teaching us that that is the best of all prayers. The desire to serve the Lord, the desire to, to surrender to the Lord makes our life perfect and happy. Because when one is under the care and shelter of the Lord, either in devotion or through the protection that comes by way of the Lord's mercy, the, the, the devotee is happy and makes progress on the path of devotional service. So here are these series of verses. And we, again, we see how Lord Nishringadev uh, was uh, very much a part of Lord Chaitanya's visit. If we go further into this uh, narration of uh, Gaur Lila as he traveled in South India, 
he uh, stopped at many, many Nishringadev temples, not just this one here mentioned, um, just to honor the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his most amazing form. He is called Adbuta. Adbuta means uh, wonderful. Uh, we sing Tabaka Kamalam Mare Nakam Adbuta Sringa. Dolitoli Ranya Kashi Putanu Bringa. Kesha Vidrita Narahari Rupa. Jaya Jagadish Sahare. So, um, Abhuta Sringa, he is most wonderful, most amazing, most unique form of the Supreme Lord, uh, very inclined to give shelter to his devotees and to destroy any obstacles in their path of devotional service, along with giving uh, physical protection. Now, this is Lord Nisringadev. And so um, we have to have that faith that Lord Nisringadev is always there. And we should not be fearful of anything in the material world because the material energy cannot touch a devotee as long as the devotee is under the care of the shelter of the Lord, the devotee is fully happy and fully protected. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, these, uh, we learn where our shelter is from the mercy of Lord Nishringadev, who is appearing tomorrow in his uh, appearance day festival around the world. The devotees will, in different ways, uh, honor Lord Nishringadev. So wherever you are, please take part as much as you can in this festival. Uh, if you can go to the temples, and the, that would be the best. If you can't participate online programs that will uh, display the festival in different ways. And um, chant. Shri Nisringa, Jaya Nisringa, Jaya Jaya Shri Nisringa. Palada Desha Jaya Padma Mukhapandu Bringam, Ugram Virya Mahavishnu, Jvalantam Sarvatomukam Nisringa, Vishinam Badram Mitya Mityam, Namami Aham. So we, <laughs> we are gladdened to know that the Lord is so merciful in this particular form. And this is where our shelter lies. <laughs> okay, so these are some points. I just wanted to preview the devotees for tomorrow's upcoming festival, which is one of the major festivals in our ISKCON calendar throughout the year. Our devotees can go deeper into the Lord's Leela by taking advantage of this, these leaders of the Lord, we learn so much about the Lord, his nature, his interaction with his devotees, his personal pastimes, and we also uh, find shelter in that, in that uh, desire to learn more about the Lord. Learning about the Lord means purifying the heart, and moving our way back home, back to Godhead. The Lord is unknowable and complete, but we can get to know him little by little in different ways on how he responds to our prayers, how he performs his activities with his devotees, and how he... Uh, how he, how he reacts in, in different situations or doesn't react. So the Lord is interesting. It's like everyone wants to know about some great personality. So we should study the Lord and see how much we can learn about him. And that learning is an endearing quality of the devotee and makes the devotee happy to learn about the Lord. And the more we learn, the more we benefit. Okay, so we'll stop there and 
see if anyone would like to add anything about Lord Nishringadev or any questions. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for narrating these pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and uh, Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Like, uh, is it uh, the same temple, uh, Simhachalam in Andhra Pradesh, uh, India, um, where uh, Lord Chaitanya recited this uh, uh, sloka, Mugram Viram Mahavishnam? Is this the mm -hmm. same? The question is, is it the, the Simhachalam yeah. temple? Yes, Guru. I think that's what it's indicated in that particular, if you go to the very beginning of the slokas in that same chapter, I think Simhachalam is mentioned earlier, if I'm correct or not, let's see. One second. Yes, So here um, it's mentioned after visiting the temple of Jiyada Narsimha, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the banks of the river Godavari to a place mm -hmm. known as Vidyanagara. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jiyada Nasringa indicates Simhachalam. Yeah. The deity we have in Germany is known as Jiyada Nasringa, mm -hmm. and the area is New Simhachalam. So, yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I request devotees, if they have any questions or comments or realizations, they can go ahead. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj, for one, narrating this wonderful pastimes and qualities of Nashingadev. Maharaj, I just wanted to comment off when you said that the Lord, anybody who is dear to a devotee is also dear to the Lord. And that is so personal. That is so caring. And I just find it very, very touching as well. That doesn't matter. Uh, in this case as well, Hiranyakashipu, there was a benefit as well to him. Obviously, there's just the pastimes of Jai and Vijay, but still um, the devotees, uh, whoever is associated to a devotee, is also dear to a Lord and they get the benefit. So it's so, so wonderful, amazing, and so merciful. That mm -hmm. Yeah, even if it's apparently inimical, there's still, because of the connection is there, there is some benefit. Then the Lord takes per personal action and that person becomes, you know, either, you know, they, they're killed or something, but still, because of the connection with the Lord, the, the connection with the Lord's devotee, they benefit. Yeah, it's because uh, it mentions in the uh, in the um, nectar devotion that there are seven sub rasas, and there one of them is fear ghastliness, like that dread and ghastliness, fear and ghastliness. So these are generally done by people who are mimical to the process of Krishna consciousness. But because the connection is with something devotional, there's a benefit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they become favorable, then it's even better. <laughs> So the more serious, so if we cannot preach them and convert them to our party, then we need to become more serious so that they can get the benefit. That's how it works automatically. As we become more advanced, your seriousness leads to your advancement. Mm -hmm. uh, then that benefit comes to all family members. And sometimes they automatically are transformed 
not by anything that happens, but just by the power of that devotion of that relative of theirs. They become favorable or they get some special mercy. Yeah, devotional service. Something you know, Prabhupada would also, also say that because of the presence of the devotees in the world, somehow the world is going on. <laughs> Because generally the world is so sinful. Um, we're getting reactions now to sinful activities around the world. But if there wasn't any devotees, it would probably be much worse. And that's, I think that's a, a good statement that has some credibility. Because um, no one can approach the Lord in the lower modes. Passion and ignorance is no a way to approach the Lord through those modes. And this is what the world is operating on, and along with all the sinful activities. But somehow it's going on because of the presence of saintly persons in the world. So it's just like they say, when, when it rains, um, the rain will come to the area where it's needed most, the agricultural fields, but it'll also rain on the rocks, and it'll rain on the ocean where there's no rain needed. So similarly, when mercy comes from the Lord, because of the devotional activities of his devotees, everyone benefits, even the non-devotees. Thank you, Maharaj. That's... Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, thank you. Also, another question, if I, if I may ask. It's uh, we all we see uh, when I went to Bangalore. There were and many other places when I see uh, different poses. Uh, Lord Narsingha Dev is sitting in different. Uh, I wouldn't say style, but pose. So one of the uh, one of the poses he's sitting as if he, he in a yoga yoga Narsingha. They say it. Yeah. Uh, so is he is he the actual. Uh, founder of the yoga uh, system or, or all the, the practices because we sometimes hear is Patanjali Muni but then you also actually found... the father of all yoga is Lord Shiva mm -hmm. yeah there's a there's a whole book yeah that describes how Lord Shiva is the father of what we, what we know as Hatha yoga that's Lord Shiva Mm, I have that, that material, and, and he teaches, actually, he is the father of uh, yoga as Lord Shiva. At least it comes from that. Everything comes ultimately from the Lord, coming down through his. But Lord Shiva is also the Lord in that sense. As far as I know, I don't know. Um, it's just a particular mood of Lord Nishringa Dev, which is desert, which is entitled the Yoga Nishringa. He's more in a meditative mood. He's in a peaceful mood. He's an approachable mood. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, anybody has any more questions? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dipti. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, I have a question. You know, um, Nursing Hakavach. Um, sometimes I find it difficult to pronounce all the words, but if we still do it, 
will we cause any offense or is no it... no the pronunciation krishna krishna is called baba hi janardana baba grahi janardana which means that he takes the essence of what you're trying to say so he, he's going to take the nectar that is your devotion and leave aside your mispronunciation mm. so from the lord's point of view your offering is not in any way minimized but when you chant it correctly you can feel the benefit when you don't chant correctly you can't feel as much but the benefit is still there <laughs> okay thank you i was just worried i'm trying to listen and then chant along with it but sometimes still it's a bit difficult so yeah it's 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 if you learn the meter every verse has a particular meter and you get into the meter of the verse then it becomes easy mm -hmm. easier is better but it's not perfect <laughs> say that yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The Lord, he takes the essence of what you're trying to do and not so much the perfection. But we should try to do it nicely, but still. Thank you, Guru Mahesh. Thank you for a lovely class. Yeah, it's more like taking the broken words of the children. The parents find the broken words of the children very pleasing so in the same way the lord will take our broken language and accept it in a pleasing way <laughs> thank you <laughs> that makes me feel so better thank you hare Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this lovely class on, on Narsingadev. When we, <clears throat> my question is, when we pray to the Lord for protection, and we understand the Lord is always ready to protect his devotees from any dangers um, in the material world, can we also pray for protection of our spiritual practices, our japa, our uh, routine, our mental health, our, you know, even other things that make a difference to our spiritual life. Like, can we pray, I don't want to fall into debt, or I don't want to get into a mess, you know, in some other way. So I get distracted from your devotional service. So can we pray for protection um, like that? You can, but if you chant Maha Mantra, it includes everything. <laughs> oh, okay. But okay. if you want to offer individual prayers, you can also do that. A lot of the prayers are just part of a larger part of our existence. Just like um, you can offer you know prayers to other devotees who are undergoing some need for prayer like maybe there's some health crisis or there are some spiritual setbacks we can offer prayers in that way but as we mentioned and these things are recommended but as we mentioned as we uh, make progress in our own devotional service and we have these desires, although we don't express these desires, Krishna knows what they are. And he, he, he sometimes pleases his devotee without the devotee even asking. Mm -hmm. And he, and the more you make it, the more you become dear to the Lord, the more he uh, becomes, he's dear to everyone, but it's how much we show our, love for the Lord, that he responds to that. Your spiritual advancement means the mercy flows according to that, how much you are actually offering your devotion to Krishna. Full devotion means full mercy. 
Mm -hmm. So you can do both, but we should see uh, if I really want to help somebody or I want to help myself on another level, let me become stronger in my own Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then we, then we undergo what is important, how to become stronger. We increase the quality of our chanting, and we increase the quality of our relationships with devotees and people in general. We take more time for studying and reading. And now the most important thing in terms of our, our getting the mercy of the Lord is how much we're giving whatever mercy the Lord has given to us to others. Then we receive more and more. He gives you more mercy because he knows you'll give it out to others. So he does that. Mm. Just like persons who use their money to spread Krishna conscious, Krishna gives them more money. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obesity. Mm. So the question is, what special activities can we do tomorrow for Nusringa? Well, <laughs> um, participate in the, in the festivals that are going on. That's one thing. You can make a, a vow if you want to, to uh, do something in devotional service and ask for the Lord's mercy and blessings. Um, the glorification of the Lord by participating in the spiritual activities centered around these festival days is the best way to honor the Lord. Participation means uh, we, we are completely absorbed in the activities. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, do your devotees, any more questions or comments? Uh, Guru Maharaj, is it fasting all day tomorrow or uh, only half day? No, it's till, uh, till uh, moonrise, I think. The Lord appeared at the uh, junction of the day and night. So we, we, we call that the, the sadhya. So that's when uh, it's called twilight, the uh, the end of the day and the beginning of the night. So that's there's an exact titi for that, and so usually it happens it happens right around the on the sadhya. So you have to find out what time that is, and usually the breakfast is uh, you take some abhi shake. It is very important to do Abhishek on this day for Nusringa Dev deities. Um, the Lord likes that and it's a, one of the main ways to worship Lord Nusringa Dev on this day is to perform ab the Abhishek. Mm -hmm. Another way we could read about the pastime of the Lord <clears throat> or hear other people reading the pastimes of the Lord. Find ways you can connect with Lord Nisringadev through tomorrow's activities. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We have a program in temple here for tomorrow evening. Good. Mm -hmm. And we can recite Prayala the prayers to Guru Maharaj, right? Um, yeah, especially that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The players of the pure devotees are very spiritually uplifting. Mm -hmm. um, time to do Abhishek. Uh, the temples are doing it according to their schedule. So most temples are starting in the late afternoon 
for instance, here where I am, we're doing bhajans at um, um, I think we're doing bhajans at 435, 530 to 640 is Abhishek, Abhishek. And then after that is lecture, after that is kirtan, and after that is distribution of prashad. So temple is slightly different in time, but usually it's... Now, if you're at home and you, and I, you want to do Abhishek there, I would say in the late afternoons, early evening would be the best time. Hare Krishna. What was that one before? Go back one, one to yeah. Uh, yes, the Maharaj, I'll read it for you. Before okay. that one, before that one. It was one we missed. Yeah, if one does not know how to perform Abhishek, then watching it on Mayapur TV, would that give the same result? Abhishek is so auspicious that those who perform it by bathing and those who watch it get the same spiritual merit. Mm -hmm. So if you take part by very carefully watching the Lord receive his bath, that's as good as being personally involved. Yeah, sometimes we find there is the devotees hold Abhishek in the temples and people come and they want to bathe also. But we understand that not everyone can, you know, is pure enough to bathe. So we say you simply watch. And if you watch, you get the same benefit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of mercy. Any more questions? What are items for Abhishek at home? Well, <clears throat> there is uh, fruit juice, different kinds of fruit juices or items, and uh, usually banana. You take banana and you make kind of like banana puree, and you, you bathe the deity with that, but then you can do the punch, punch amrit, which is uh, milk, yogurt, ghee, honey, sugar water. First you do the punch amrit, and then you bathe them with water after that, and then you start doing the fruit juices. So you can make your fruit juices in the blender. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So, so Guru Maharaj, we are past one hour now. Uh, okay, so we can stop here. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Oh, I think devotees doesn't have any more questions. Yeah, I should also mention, I had forgotten, but now I remember today is the disappearance day of Jayananda Andaprabhu, who was uh, glorified by Srila Prabhupada and given this particular day to celebrate his disappearance each year, the day before the appearance of Lord Nishringa Day. And so... Uh, his disappearance day is today. Uh, so you can read about Jayananda. There is some 
if you go online, you can find information. There's also a couple books written in glorification of his devotional activities. In the very beginning of ISKCON, when he helped establish the Rathayatra all around uh, the United States. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. We'll stop here. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, uh, all the devotees for participating. Um, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone, devotees. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Happy Lord Narsika Day is appearance day to all my God family. Hare Krishna.